Well, shit. That's right, lady and gentlemen, this is it. The final ever episode of Murder Drones is just around the corner and there is no time to waste. We have a fresh new trailer just waiting to be dissected. So let's grab our schizophrenia meds and our definitely not stolen game theory logos and jump right into it. So anyways, what's up my guys and gals, it's your boy Terramaniac back with another smoking Out video and today I'm talking about the final episode of Murder Drones. Alright, so first order of business, I need to get you guys caught up to speed. Go watch Murder Drones. I'm done asking, you're gonna do it, and you're gonna like it. Anyways, I think the best place to start is at the end of episode 7. On the one hand, we have the main plotline going on deep underground in the Cabin Fever labs with Uzi, N, and Sin. You see, Sin, being an Envy shipper, had enough of Nuzi being canon and decided to break it up herself, and was kicked out of church for being a little goober, while Uzi got herself sent to the back rooms for trying to save him. On the other hand, back on the surface we have Thad, Lizzie, and Khan detecting unauthorized J screen time, leading to them pulling up to put an end to it. So yeah, that's about all you should need to remember from episode 7. Now, let's get on to episode 8. So about that trailer I mentioned earlier, just like the trailer for episode 7, the first 40 seconds or so are just rehashed clips from previous episodes, followed by about 10 seconds of actual teaser footage. Now I know what you're thinking, but Tyromaniac, who could possibly predict an entire episode based on only 10 seconds of information? Well, Mr. Strawman, to that I say, let me ask this clone I just made of myself, who do you think would be able to pull it off, Mr. Tyromaniac? I'm glad you asked, I think that you're schizophrenic. In those 10 seconds, we were introduced to about 19 unique frames from Episode 8, so first order of business is going to be to go through each and every one to try and gather as much evidence as possible. Oh, and don't worry, I will be numbering them and there will be a quiz about it. With that said, let's dive in. 1. Absolute Solver Tentacles sneaking through the air in what looks like another giant explosion. Can't really tell where it is from this shot, although the color and brightness of the tentacles makes me think that this is the explosion that destroyed Earth. 2. Sin smiling while doing a little snippy snippy with her fingers. Can't really tell where this one takes place either. 3. Uzi standing alone in what looks like the elevator shaft from episode 6, with a bit of oil smudged on her face. I'm almost 100% confident that this is still in the Cabin Fever labs, but it could be a new area of the labs that we haven't seen yet. 4. All of Nori's and Uzi's schizo scribblings floating around in Khan's closet. Probably just an establishing shot or something, I doubt it'll actually be important. 5. Jay taking aim into something off screen. We see a single snowflake falling... up? So we know this is on the surface somewhere. Jose has a horrified look on her face, like she just witnessed something terrible. Maybe something like... oh, I don't know. The loss of a loved one? 6. A completely destroyed planet with the same glowing tendrils from frame 1 connecting the chunks of debris. Any guesses on what planet this might be? Also, one of those tendrils is pulling what looks like a dropship towards the center. 7. Uzi just straight up re-entering the atmosphere, I guess? I don't know, apparently her ass doubles as a heat shield. 8. Uzi safely back on the ground, slinging a pickaxe over her shoulder while grabbing her railgun with her solver tail. Judging by the color scheme and the random tree in the background, I'm gonna guess that this is somewhere in Camp 98.7, just outside the labs. That red light in the background is interesting though, and wasn't Lizzie the last one holding the railgun? 9. Sin doing some spooky stuff in the same part of the labs we saw in frame 3. Notice the similar lighting in the red tubing. 10. Jay taking aim at something off screen yet again. This time, the look on her face is more confrontational than horrified, although I think it's safe to say that she's still on the surface thanks to the trees and the snow falling in the background. That said, it's a little interesting that the sky is blood red in this shot, and that the snow appears to be falling down instead of up. 11. Just one of those absolute silver claws we keep seeing. Can't tell much about where this one is, except there is still snow in the air so it's definitely on the surface. 12. Sin standing on a railing of some sort, most likely at the entrance to the labs, as she's about to teleport. 13. Sin again, except this time she's on normal ground and just barely dodging a rocket that was fired at her. 14. End with a concerned look on his face standing in what appears to be another hallway in the labs. 15. Uzi being backed up against some of that tubing I mentioned earlier by an absolute silver hand tentacle thingy. 16. End hitting the battle stance somewhere in Camp 98.7, judging by the snow and the color palette, Though his expression does shift from fuck shit up to shit that's fucked. 17. Sin diving towards Uzi on top of what looks like a giant pile of random debris. Again with the sky being blood red too. 18. Khan, 
also in Camp 98.7 if I had to guess, for the same reasons that I've already said a bajillion times. I don't know what that expression is, but it kinda looks like a HA TAKE THAT kind of laugh, you know? 19. Some random dropship weaving in and out of a bunch of space debris. I am fairly confident that this one is in orbit around Copper 9, due to both the rings and the fact that the planet we see in the background is still intact. Finally, it got through all 19 of them. So yeah, 10 seconds of teaser footage stretched out into, insert length here, of information. How did I do it? Good question, but not the one you should be asking. That would be, how do we use this information? The answer, of course, being like this. This is where the fun begins, and by fun, I'm of course referring to pain. Using the evidence we just gathered, there are a few things that we should be able to figure out about the events of Episode 8. First off, the red color we see poking its head out in the Camp 98.7 frames is most likely the sun, since we see the sunrise at the end of the pilot casting the same reddish light. An important thing to remember here is that we learn from both the pilot and Episode 4 that the sun is lethal to drones corrupted by the Absolute Solver. If I'm right about the locations that these different frames take place in, then it seems like a good chunk of the episode is going to be centered around Camp 98.7, which is an outside location. That said, the sun rising doesn't exactly explain the frames where the sky is just completely blood red. This looks more like what we saw in N's flashback from Episode 7, when the Absolute Solver was dealing with overpopulation on Earth. I'm sure the fact that we're seeing something similar happening on Copper 9 in these teaser frames can only mean good things, right? So yeah, the sun is rising to kill everyone, and Sin is about to clean house on an entire planet again. Moving on, a major question that a lot of people had after Episode 7 was whether or not Uzi was actually in space, and now I think we have our answer. Remember when I mentioned the pickaxe she slung over her shoulder in frame 8? That pickaxe never fell into the pit. It stayed buried in the floor after possessed Uzi threw it. If Uzi has it now, then that means that she went back to the labs and grabbed it, which leaves us with two options. Either Uzi actually got yeeted into space, somehow managed to re-enter the atmosphere while landing close to the labs, and went back specifically to grab that pickaxe, or she never left the labs in the first place. What I think is going on here is that Uzi is actually just chilling at the bottom of the flesh pit, hallucinating being in space, and that pretty soon she's gonna wake up to make her escape, grabbing the pickaxe along the way for the funsies. So that solves that question, but what about the thing you guys actually want to know about? That's right everyone, it's character death time. Starting with the ones nobody cares about, Thad and Lizzie. Judging by the fact that we see Khan in the trailer while the two of them are nowhere to be seen, despite the fact that all three of them pulled up to the labs together, I don't think it's a stretch to say that something might have happened to them. There is also the fact that Uzi is the one with the railgun now instead of Lizzie, who had it at the end of episode 7, which means that she probably lost hold of it somehow, like perhaps by losing hold of her life. With that said, would Liam Vickers really go out of his way to kill two side characters for no reason? I'll save you, Penny! Don't mind me, just crossing the street. Please! I don't understand what I did wrong! Yeah, they're dead. Next up on the chopping block, Jay. It's a good thing Glitch changed their channel banner before I recorded this, I'll say that much. If you remember, N and V were only able to get their past memories back thanks to Uzi replacing Sin as their administrator. Jay didn't get so lucky, meaning that she's still under Sin's direct influence. Sin could mess with everything about Jay, from her memories to her vision, meaning that she could easily trick Jay into thinking that she's fighting to stop her when she's actually just doing her bidding. However, we know that Sin's hold on someone can be broken by an extreme emotional reaction. Now think about it this way. N was the only one of the murder trio to witness the Tessa is Sin twist, meaning that Jay could still be in the dark about Tessa being turned into a costume. Don't you think it's possible that the emotional meltdown that frees Jay from Sin's control could be, oh I don't know, finding out that the one person she's ever truly cared about has been dead for years? What about finding out that you've been taking orders from that person's killer? I think that might just do it and I also think that Sin would probably just kill her off the moment she shows any signs of realizing. I mean, hey, at least it's better than getting one-shot by an emo girl's school project. I'm gonna be dodging death threats for that, aren't I? Well, let's move on to our final two victims in the firing squad, N and Uzi. Now think about it this way. At the end of episode 6, we had V sacrificing herself to save the two of them, and at the end of episode 7, we had Uzi sacrificing herself to save N. 
I don't think the trend here is an accident, and if we follow it, we'd find a nice little sign telling us that it's N's turn now. I mean, who else would it be? V is a little too busy being a Jurassic Park reference, and I doubt they'd let Uzi go two for two. That's not to say that he has to die in Episode 8, I just think that we're definitely going to see him throw himself in harm's way to save Uzi. Speaking of her, I doubt that they'd have her pull the sacrifice card in one episode, only to kill her off in a different episode, so she is probably safe. So yeah, both N and Uzi have a decent shot at survival here, but if I had to choose one of them, then it's definitely N who's getting cooked. At least sacrificing himself to save the universe would be a nice way to make up for all the people he's killed. There's the controversial part of the video done and dusted with, but there's still one burning question left to answer. English or Spanish? Will Murder Drones, after almost three years and eight episodes, have a good ending or a bad ending? Well, the way I see it, the story up until now has put us on one of two separate paths. For the sake of throwing a bone to the SSTWL fans, I'm going to be calling these the C2 Strain route and the Black Dogs route. Spoilers ahead for both of those stories, link in the description, but it basically boils down to this. The C2 Strain route is our good ending where a few people might die, but at the end of the day, the bad guy is defeated and our survivors get to live happily ever after. The Black Dog's route, on the other hand, is our bad ending, where the bad guy wins and our main characters get to spend all of eternity under their control. Fun. Anyways, there's not much in the trailer itself that really tells us which one it's gonna be, so for that, we're gonna have to go back. Back. 10,000 years ago to the ancient era that was 2020. In his goodbye video for Scary Storytime with Liam, an old YouTube channel of his, our beloved Liam Vickers told us that any series that gets people invested is obligated to deliver a happy ending. Assuming that he hasn't changed his mind on that, then we're most likely looking at the C2 strain route. A few people might die, but when the dust settles, everything's gonna turn out okay. Oh, and we're probably getting a few more Earth flashbacks too. I honestly don't see another reason why they'd put Earth in the trailer if they aren't setting up a Season 2, so there you go. Anyways, now that we have all these predictions laid out in front of us, it's finally time to start piecing them together. Gather around, children, and let me paint you a picture of exactly how I think the final episode of Murder Drones is gonna go down. Imagine the scene. We start off with Uzi trapped at the bottom of the Absolute Silver Pit in the Captain Fever Labs. She is currently hallucinating that she's stranded in space, although eventually she finds her way back to reality and out of the pit. N, on the other hand, is already making his way back out of the labs after being thrown out of the church. With that, both of them are headed back to the surface, albeit separately. Unfortunately, they aren't going to be alone forever. With nothing left for her to do in the labs now that the patch is destroyed, Sin is also going to be making her way back to the surface, making sure to stop and terrorize the other two along the way. Meanwhile, Thad, Lizzie, and Khan have their own terror to deal with back at the entrance. I can't imagine these three being able to fend off Jay by themselves even with the railgun, and I think they know that too. Sure, they might not be able to kill her with it, but they could use it as a scare tactic. They just need her to hesitate long enough for help to arrive. Speaking of which, N and Uzi's race to try and escape the labs is going to bring them right to the surface with the others. Unfortunately, they're being followed. Enter Sin, fresh in their tails and ready to crush the last bastion of resistance on Copper 9. Not only that, but Sin would also have Jay fighting on her side thanks to the whole administrator thing. Thad and Lizzie wouldn't stand a chance in a fight like this, so their lives are cashed in for shock value almost immediately. With that, the final and greatest fight of the entire series has finally been kicked off. N, Uzi, and Khan's there too I guess all standing together to face off against the embodiment of the Absolute Solver and her murder pet. That said, there is a weak link in this fight, and it's not Senior Door Lover. This whole time, Jay thought that she's been taking orders from Tessa, and Sin can only keep up that illusion for so long. Jay is bound to realize eventually, and when she does, when she shows even the slightest hint that she's waking up to the truth, it's over. Jay's already served her purpose as far as Sin cares. She got her to the lab safely. Now, it's time for a defective model to be disassembled. After all, Sin is more than capable of holding off N, Uzi, and Khan by herself. Or so it would seem. There's one simple factor that we forgot to account for here. Time. 
It can't be night forever after all. The sun has to come up eventually, and it might just be the best hope there is of stopping the Absolute Solver for good. Only one problem. Our protagonists have to stay alive until then. Like I said, Sin has the power to bring down planets single-handedly. What are three little drones gonna do to her? There would be multiple close calls where Sin is on the verge of outright killing Uzi. And maybe one of those calls gets a little too close. Maybe that's how N gets the push he needs to finally, after seven episodes, stop holding back. He goes all out on Sin, and even then he can't win by himself, and he knows it. But maybe he's not trying to. Maybe he's just trying to return the favor after Uzi saved him in the previous episode. This sacrifice pushes N to his limits and puts him on the brink of death, but it, along with the unmatched power of the sun, will ultimately be the killing blow that puts an end to the Absolute Solver once and for all. And then everyone lives hap- There it is, ladies and gentlemen. My thoughts on how the final ever episode of Murder Drones is gonna go down. Is that exactly what I think the plot is gonna be beat for beat? Of course not. I was talking out of my ass when I said that. However, I do think it's a good general framework for how things are going to be structured, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Of course, I forgot to mention the most important part of the ending. The part where Sin suddenly reawakens after being nearly killed, only to turn to the camera and say, That's it for this video, so remember to light up that like button, smoke that subscribe button, drop a big old comment, check out some of the videos on the left, and I will see you guys in the next video. I swear to God, if they bring V back to life,